High energy recognition using computer vision has been a very active research topic because it has various applications, such as touchless interfaces in cars and sign language recognition. In general, vision-based hand gesture recognition approaches fall into two major categories, 3D model-based methods and 2D appearance model-based methods. 3D model-based methods are relatively computationally expensive, so it is not very suitable for real-time implementation in ordinary PCs. Our goal is a real-time hand gesture recognition system, so we will adopt 2D appearance model-based methods. There are many algorithms that have been introduced in order to recognize gestures. The traditional algorithm consists of two components, handcrafted features and cast files. Nowadays, convolutional neural networks have enjoyed a great success in image recognition which is due to the large public image databases and high-performance computing systems. Since the convolutional neural network can learn the feature automatically, so we will use the convolutional neural network for feature learning and classification of hand gestures. Let me introduce the configuration of our CNN. We adopt sequential model for our recognition system. Our sequential model contains three major components, convolutional layer, mass pooling layer, and fully connected layer. As discussed in introduction, in order to make our system run in real time, we adopt 2D convolutional layer. After two 2D convolutional layer, one mass pooling layer comes in to make our model more robust with noise. Then we apply draw-on method to the input of the fully connected layer, which is also the output of the mass pooling layer, so that overfitting can be efficiently prevented. We also need to flatten the output of the mass pooling layer, so that it becomes a 1D vector that can be fed to the fully connected layer. After one fully connected layer, output layer comes. Output layer contains four units which correspond to four classes we want to classify. There is rock, paper, scissors, and nothing. We adopt soft mass function as the activation function of the output layer, while other layers use ReLU as their activation function. The loss function in our model is the cross entropy. The optimization algorithm we use to find parameters to minimize our loss function is elder delta. Elder delta is an extension of elder grad that says to reduce its aggressive monotonically decreasing learning rates. Instead of accumulating all past square gradients, elder delta restricts the window of accumulated past gradient to some fixed size W. Instead of efficiently storing W period square gradients, the sum of gradients is recursively defined as a decaying average of all past square gradients. With elder delta, we do not even need to set a default learning rate as it has been eliminated from the update rule. The main tool used in this project is Keras. Keras is an API for implementing neural networks. It encapsulates different types of neural network algorithms into different modules and makes the implementation and experimentation of neural network very easy. Keras has some advantages. It is capable to run on the top of TensorFlow, Theno, and so on. The compatibility of Keras is high. Keras supports the convolution neural network, which is used in this project. So the model training, model saving, and model loading all rely on the usage of Keras. Moreover, it is quite user-friendly in terms of modularity and extensibility. The API is straightforward and easy to understand. In details, we use several functions of Keras API. The first one is the sequential model. A sequential model is initialized and layers are added to the model one by one. After adding all layers to the model, the model is compiled and get ready for training or loading weights. 
Second is model training. After model is initialized, we can feed the data which is preprocessed into model and run several approach on the training set with some preset parameters. This process will include both training and validation use the proportion of the data set. The training will generate the weights. Using carrots, the weights can be saved in the file with the extension of hdf5. Later, this file can be loaded into an initialized model. The model with trend weights is further used to approximate the probability of the captured gestures being classified to each type. This project can use TensorFlow Athena as the backend. The codes are compiled using Python 2 as Keras work well with Python. The user interface consists of a video frame captured by the camera and the frame showing the binary mode of the focus window. After the user launches the program and the video frame shows up, the user can press the G on the keyboard to turn the prediction mode on. While the prediction mode is on, the detection results will be shown in the video frame correspondingly to the gestures captured by the camera in real time. Then we would like to talk about the performance of our training. After several trials, we are able to set the meta parameter of our model to the following. We use 32 3 by 3 filter to do the convolution and then a 2 by 2 max pooling and following by the dense layer of with 128 features output. Also, a dropout with 15% probability is used to prevent overfitting. Therefore, in total, the, the number of parameters is around 14 million. As there is a lot of parameters to train, using CPU will be too slow for the large model. Therefore, we utilize the modern GPU to train our model. In our training environment, an NVIDIA GTX 1070 is used to train. The total number of apples is 15, and each apple takes around 40 seconds. To, therefore, we are able to train our model in around 10 minutes. Regarding the training result, the loss is decreased from around 4 to the 0 0.3 and the accuracy is increased to around 99% after 15 epoch. In addition, the loss and accuracy become stable after around 10 or 12 epoch, therefore we believe it's enough to train our model only using 15 epochs. By viewing the accuracy chart in detail, as you can see, in the during the last five epochs, the accuracy is sta stable around 0.985 around, and for the unstable the accuracy reading, it's made. This may be caused by the calculation of the accuracy for between each epoch. We also do the validation for our training dataset. We use 20% of our data to do the validation. As you can see on the graph, we do a validation run after each training epoch. At the end, the validation loss is slightly lo higher than the training loss, and the accuracy of the validation is around 0.95 or 0.96. The validation accuracy is considered to be the generalization accuracy, which means that 
Our model should have a 96% accuracy in the real recognition process. The data set we used is captured by the program. There are four kinds of gestures. Nothing, pepper, rock, and scissor. We use N, P, R, and S to replace these four kinds of gestures. For each gesture, we have captured five groups of pictures, and each group has 301 pictures. Therefore, the total number of each gesture is 1505, and the total number of pictures is 6020. OpenCV2 is used for capturing the user's hand gestures. In order to simplify the picture, binary mode is used to make post-process on the captured image to highlight the edge. First, convert the image to grayscale. Then, apply a Gaussian pure effect with adaptive threshold filter. This mode is useful when you have an empty background like a wall. Before we run the program, we need to prepare the environment for running. The package list and version are as follows. We can use a Conda navigator to install the package. Or we can use the command pip install or conda install to install the package we need. After install the package and software, we can use conda list command to check the package and version. Then we run the program. And we can see two windows. We adjust the camera and using keyboard to adjust the focus window to a proper position. And then we can see our hands in the focus window in the binary mode. We can press button G to start the predict mode. And we can see uh, the prediction is on the screen. Please be note that if part of your hand is not in the focus window, it will cause a wrong prediction. And that's the end of our video. Thank you for watching.